In this lecture, we will discuss ventricular tachycardia, also known as VTAC. VTAC is defined as a rapid and repetitive firing of three or more PVCs in a row with a rate of 100 to 250 beats per minute originating in the ventricles of the heart. This can be potentially life-threatening because it can lead to conditions such as ventricular fibrillation, asystole, and sudden death. So there are two main causes of VTAC, which include focal and re-entrant. So focal can be caused by hormones such as thyroid hormones, low oxygen, stretching of the ventricles, and cardiac diseases such as coronary artery disease, which causes irritation to the myocardial cells. Reentrant can be caused by previous injury to the heart, such as an MI, which has formed a scar or damaged tissue in the ventricle. Be sure to check out our lecture on reentry and the mechanism of arrhythmias due to reentry. In the reentrant cycle, the scar tissue can cause the electrical current to be fired outside of the heart's normal electrical current pathway. Each time the current occurs, it causes the heart to contract, which results in a premature ventricular contraction or an extra beat. Clinical symptoms. So because the ventricles are beating so rapidly, they don't have time to fill all the way. This can cause symptoms like lightheadedness because there's decreased oxygen flow to the brain, shortness of breath due to less oxygen perfusion in the lungs, chest pain because the heart isn't getting enough blood, palpitations which can turn into V-fib which can be deadly, and you may see cannon A waves in the neck which are secondary to AV dissociation and hear an S1 sound that has various intensities. EKG findings for VTAC are generally easy to spot. You will see wide and bizarre QRS complexes and tachycardia with a heart rate of greater than 100 beats per minute. The EKG for VTAC can be monomorphic or polymorphic. So in a monomorphic wave, all of the QRS complexes are identical in amplitude. And in the polymorphic wave, the amplitude keeps changing. Next, we'll discuss the different types of VTAC, which are sustained and non-sustained. Sustained ventricular tachycardia lasts longer than 30 seconds and is almost always symptomatic. It's associated with hemodynamic compromise, such as hypotension or MI. It's life-threatening, and it can progress to VFib. Unsustained VTAC is brief and self-limited, usually is asymptomatic. However, when it's present with coronary artery disease and left ventricular dysfunction, it's an independent risk factor for sudden death. So it's important to check with patients who have non-sustained ventricular tachycardia for underlying heart disease. The treatment for sustained and unsustained ventricular tachycardia differs slightly. For sustained ventricular tachycardia, if the patient is hemodynamically stable with mild symptoms and has a systolic blood pressure greater than 90, pharmacological therapy includes IV amiodarone, IV procainamide, or IV sotolol. If the patient is unstable, then immediate cardioversion followed by IV amiodarone is given. All patients with sustained ventricular tachycardia should undergo a pacemaker placement. For unsustained ventricular tachycardia, if there is no underlying heart disease and the patient is asymptomatic, there is no need to treat. These patients are not at risk for increased cardiac death. However, if there is an underlying disease such as an MI or left ventricular dysfunction, an ICD placement is needed. Pharmacological treatment is secondary and amiodarone is best.
Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure that you like and subscribe and if possible, share it with your friends as well.